the ordinary righteous people, what he calls the tzaddikim, who are going to get to a certain level on this ladder. Um, and then there's going to be the chassidim, he calls it, who get up to the higher levels of it. And then, he says, there's those few who get to the top, which he calls uh, the holy man, ish hakadosh. And those who get to that highest level, in effect, become that living embodiment of God, and they, he says, Lutzato says, will become prophets. In other words, they will, God will speak through them and even have the power to raise the dead. It's fascinating. It's a fascinating book. And why am I blanking on the name? I wrote a whole paper about it once. Um, there, it's been translated in English a couple of times. <laughs> Derech Hashem. What? Derech Hashem. No, that's not it. Uh, that's another book. Um, oh. um, it's called Misilat Yisharim. The Paths of the Righteous. Two translations are available. One that was done by Mordechai Kaplan. Um, there's a new edition of that with a wonderful commentary by my friend and colleague Rabbi Ira Stone of Philadelphia, who wrote a kind of modern commentary on it. Uh, also an introduction as to why, why did Kaplan translate this work. From which language? Uh, from Hebrew. It was written in Hebrew. Uh, and then there is a, um, a translation done by an Orthodox scholar. Uh, in two volumes. But the Misilat Yisharim is a fascinating book. You will find it, of course, incredibly ascetic in many of its approaches. Um, but nonetheless, it was very influential, a lot of, especially in the 19th century, amongst the kind of revivalist Musar, the Musar movement, as it's called, um, in Lithuania, where there was this whole spirituality movement started by a guy named Salanter in the 19th century amongst in the yeshivot of Lithuania, which was not at all, you know, interested in Hasidim. Um, so it was, it was a kind of intellectual um, spirituality, um, very interested in uh, what we might call psychological approaches to trying to achieve a higher level of spirituality. It's a fascinating <laughs> area. Um, there's been a fair bit written on the Musar movement, and some of the Musar works have been translated. Again, Ira Stone actually uh, wrote a, a, a short book about how to bring the values of the Musar movement into modern life. And it's, it's, it's a very interesting thing. Yes, These Harvey. steps going up to uh, reach God, uh, <coughs> smack of, is it Buddhism, that have various levels to reach Nirvana? But it actually it's, it has an old tradition, in, it comes right out of the rabbinic tradition. In other words, this notion of it, I mean, Bachi Ibn Pakuda in his book, the, the Duties of the Heart, talks about gates. You know, you enter a certain gate yeah. and then you go mm -hmm. to a new gate and so on. So that, that's an old, old idea. It go, it, it's way back. It doesn't have to be, have any influence from Buddhism at all um, to, to be part of that. Go the other way around. Did this who knows? It's one of those things that is so human uh, to look at walking along a path as being a metaphor for life, right? Mm -hmm. The misilat yisharim, the path of the righteous, mm -hmm. right? This is the way to go. Even the term halakha in Hebrew is often interpreted as the way coming from a route to walk. Well, that's the way a lot of people understand it. Uh, I mean, I mean, you know, and the Buddhists have the notion of dharma, which is that's the way. It's all that's what that means, right? And even um, Maimonides, in his introductory poem to the guide, refers to what he's doing as the Derech HaKodesh, the holy way, which he actually gets out of a verse in uh, Isaiah. So anyway, let's now, um, we're going to, I want to sort of, chapter four was where we did the thing with the, um, the diet. Chapter five is about how a scholar, a sage, a Talmud Chacham, should <coughs> govern his behavior, right? And um, if you take a look at the first one, um, even as a sage is recognized by his wisdom and moral principles which distinguish him from the rest of his people, so ought he be to be recognized in all his activities in his food and drink, in the fulfillment of his marital obligations, in attention, to, in attention to excretory functions, in his walk, talk, dress, management affairs, and business transactions. And so this chapter is all about that, including how he's supposed to go to the bathroom. It's about how he's supposed to, in other words, the Talmud Chacham is supposed to be an example um, to, the, to everybody else and to live on a higher level um, so as to 
inspire people. So in other words, he's got to 